You know what? Forget about the spring collections. It is just barely April and we are already talking about summer luxury beauty releases here in this episode. I have sneak peeks of Dior Summer. Tom Ford has recently launched their Soleil collection. Charlotte Tilbury is resurrecting one of my favorite products. And in the industry news section of this episode, we are going to be talking about celebrity brands. Why do some of them succeed? Why do some of them fail? Specifically, JLo Beauty exiting Sephora and also the big news of Rare Beauty looking for a potential buyer. We are getting into all of that in this episode, friends. So if you want to hear some more, then keep watching. What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well, and welcome back to another episode of What is New in Luxury Beauty. This is the series on my channel where we talk about all of the newest, the hottest, and the most desirable new releases that are going on in luxury beauty and any other relevant and interesting industry news. We have so many good things to talk about today, as I already mentioned. And as is tradition, friends, we're going to be kicking things off with the new product release, Pass or Yes, starting off with the the Dior Summer Collection. Yes, believe it or not, we've made it past a lot of spring releases from Dior, and now we have some sneak peeks for summer. Take a look at this collection, guys. We have products both from the Dior main line and also the backstage line. Let's start talking about the two new eyeshadow palettes that they are coming out with. So they have two here. These are called Coral Frame and Pastel Glow. The Coral Frame seems to be the warmer toned one, so we have some neutrals with pops of coral and also yellow, and then Pastel Glow is going to be the cooler toned quint. It looks a little bit more kind of like pinky mauvey leaning. And then we have pops of lilac and icy blue. And when I first saw just like the regular promotional photos for these, I really was not impressed. I feel like every time we see those promo photos, the palettes look so dusty. And then usually, usually I'm pleasantly surprised once I actually order the palettes. And that's kind of how I feel about these. When I see these photos in more of like, a, um, like a natural setting. I actually am really, really excited for these. I am going to be getting both. I am going to be reviewing them here on my channel. So make sure you are subscribed because that will be coming as soon as these launch. What can I say, guys? I am a sucker for a neutral palette with pops of color. I like that they came out with a warm one and a cool one so everyone is happy. I think that these are going to sell very well. I really like that beautiful pop of yellow in the, what's it called, coral frame. I think that looks so, so fun. I also like the icy blue in the cooler tone palette. That icy blue is very much a trendy color for 2024. If you guys watch my fashion week roundup video slash roast that I posted last week, you guys will know cornflower blue, ice blue, very popular both in fashion, but we're also seeing it here in the makeup as well, which I don't know. I like it. I like a nice little frosty pop of something something. I wouldn't look at this palette and necessarily think summer, but I do think it's a really beautiful palette. What can I say? Comment down below and let me know if you agree. In addition to the two eyeshadow palettes, we are also getting two new rosy glow blushes. These are going to be in the shades pink lilac, which seems to be kind of like a light purple and also poppy coral, which is going to be an orangey red. Now these I'm like... <sighs> I'm like less excited about. Part of me wants to get them for review purposes, but for the most part, I really don't want these. And I'll explain why. A lot of you guys know that Dior reformulated these blushes last year. They came out with more shades, which I think was a fantastic idea. You know, more preferences, more skin tones, all of that is good, but they really did ruin the formula. It isn't as good as the old blushes. I felt like those were much more blendable. I don't know. I just really don't like the new formula all that much. So so I'm really hesitant to pick these up. When you take a look at the swatches as well, they really don't look very pigmented, which is okay, but we also know that they're not super blendable just based off of the other colors that they launched last year. And a lot of folks, a lot of folks here on social media in the comments are saying, don't we already have these shades? Because they look very similar to the pink and the coral colors that they launched last year. So overall, I would say these are probably a skip. I think that they're going to be a pass for me. I'm to focus more so on the eyeshadow palettes, but comment down below. Let me know what you think. I just, I feel like they ruined the formula and I really don't need to be spending any more money on these, but I will tell you that I am going to be getting, which is another Dior Forever Glow Maximizer. These are a new product that were launched this year. If you missed it, I reviewed three of the shades and I absolutely love them. It's basically a liquid highlighter. Okay. But I really, really like the formula. Very moisturizing, very beautiful and natural. They are going to be launching this new shade, which which I think is called Nude Glow. 
It's a little bit hard to figure out which is which here in the post, but I think this is going to be the shade Nude, and it looks absolutely beautiful. If you were kind of hoping for more of like a classic champagne highlight in their permanent range, I think this is gonna be the one for you to get. I'm not quite sure if this is gonna be limited edition. I hope it's not. I hope it's permanent. It feels like something that should be permanent, right? I don't know. You guys let me know. That is something that I'm very excited for. And then the rest of the collection is kind of like, Mm, like, if you don't have a lot of Dior makeup, maybe you could check these out. They have two new lip glows here, which I think if you already have a lot of lip glows, like I already have a couple, you really don't need new ones, but they have a lilac one and a coral one, basically to pair with the blushes. That's kind of what they've been doing lately, which I think is a genius marketing scheme. I think that's great. There's also a lip tint, and this is gonna be in the shade Natural Hibiscus. It looks beautiful, but I will say, guys, I don't think that the Dior lip tints, I don't think that they're bad but they're not my favorite product from Dior and they are not my favorite lip tint. They're just okay and they're very expensive. So I also would probably recommend passing on that. And then finally, guys, we also have two nail varnishes here and these are gonna be in Lemon Glow and Pastel Mint. These are also going to be a pass from me because I just like, I don't know, I don't go for pastels all that much. I also will say gold nail polish, it seems like a good idea and then you put it on your nails and it looks like you have like toe fungus. I don't know. Does anybody else agree? Okay, gold nail polish, especially on my toes, looks so, so bad and unflattering. So I'm going to be skipping on those. Overall, the main thing that I'm excited about are the eyeshadow palettes, friends, but I would love to hear from you. Make sure you comment down below. Let me know if you're interested in me reviewing any parts of this collection. And if you see anything new coming up from Dior on social media, make sure that you tag me. And by the way, if you happen to be new here, I just wanted to take a quick second to pause and say, hi, welcome. My name is Sophia and I hope you shop for luxury. I'm very passionate about luxury, especially luxury beauty. So I talk about it here a lot on this channel. I do this series regularly in addition to reviewing a lot of new makeup releases. So if you love luxury beauty, hit that subscribe button to join our fam. We would love to have you. And as a quick reminder, pretty much everything that I'm talking about in this video, any of the makeup that is on my face today, it's all going to be linked down below. I do use affiliate links. So thank you so much to those of you who shop through my links to support my channel. And I will also link down below friends, all the Instagram accounts that I suggest you follow for all of this top news and the articles that we're going to be discussing a little bit later in this video. Couple of updates for you friends, the Tom Ford Soleil collection, that is now available. I know we discussed that a little bit in the last episode, but I just wanted to let you guys know that the Emerald Dusk palette, the highlighter, and also the lip blush, which I think is just like a lip oil, those are all now available. So I'll have all those products linked down below. I mostly wanted to show you guys some better photos of the Emerald Dusk palette because this looks even pretty prettier than I thought it was going to be when we talked about it last time and I was taking a look at the promo photos. Look at these colors. Somebody tagged me on Instagram or maybe DM me and said, those look like Sophia colors. And I couldn't have said it better myself. You have like that frosty white. There's two beautiful corals. One of them looks kind of like multidimensional, so summery. And then the emerald shade that they chose, it looks lighter and brighter and more summery than I thought it would be. I'm really excited to try this out. By the way, I think this is in the classic form. Formula. It's not the creme. It's not the wet dry. I have ordered this. It was supposed to come yesterday. Okay, Saks Fifth Avenue, but I think it's going to be delivered tomorrow. My shipment is delayed. So if it comes in time, I will insert swatches here, guys. So you can get a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of an early taste, a little bit of a sneak peek, but I am going to test it out and I will be reviewing it. I skipped on the lip blush, that is a pass. And I also passed on the lip products and the highlighter. I really just wanted the palette, okay? I really just wanted the palette. So that was a yes. Make sure you are subscribed if you wanna see a review. Also, if you have not been following the Guerlain collection also finally launched. We have all of the new meteorites and I apologize friends because I think in the last episode I told you guys that these were like a limited edition version. I don't think that these are limited edition. This is the permanent new packaging and I already reviewed these. I already did a whole review with both myself and also my mom who's in her 60s. So I'll link that down below. If you guys want to hear a little bit more about what is new when it comes to these meteorites and if you want to see 
see them both on my skin and my mom's skin. Highly recommend you check out the review. A lot of you guys said it was very helpful. So I'm so, so glad. And I also reviewed for you guys the new eyeshadow palette. So all of these will be linked down below. Those are very hot collections, guys. And in fact, you know what? I think Macy's is having a sale and the meteorites are included in that. So make sure you hop on that, guys, if you're interested in the meteorites. Trying to help you out. Trying to help you get a little bit of a discount on this luxury beauty. I feel like there's a lot of positivity in this episode today, friends, because here's another product that I'm really excited about. This is from Rare Beauty, and this is the Soft Pinch Luminous Powder Blush. You guys know I love a glowy blush, and that is exactly what these look like. They look really similar to the ones from RMS that I absolutely adore. Some of my favorite blushes in my collection. A lot of you guys have also told me that you really like the ones from House Labs, although I think that those are technically highlighters, but I don't know, tomato, tomato. They look really similar to those as well. These are gonna be launching in six shades. They are already available and guys, I already ordered all of the shades. I already ordered all of the shades. We're gonna be doing a proper review. This is a yes from me. I feel like these are gonna be really nice. The only thing that I'm a little bit hesitant about is that I kind of wish that the shade range was a little bit more interesting. All of these are just sort of like pink and rose gold. We don't really have like any plums. There's no nudes. At least it doesn't look that way, but I'm gonna keep my mind open. Okay, we're gonna try these out here on my channel. So these are a yes for me, but comment down below and let me know if you're excited about these. Moving along to Pat McGrath Labs. We saw on social media last week that she was teasing a new product. And I'm not gonna lie, friends, I saw that it was gonna be something pink and I like immediately didn't care. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pat McGrath, but I just don't want any more pink. That being said, I think that this release actually makes a lot of sense. This is going to be a new shade of her Blurring Under Eye Powder. Really, really nice product. Does a really good job of concealing dark circles and any type of darkness under the eyes. And this is going to be in one of those light pink shades, which have become very popular recently. If you have fair skin like me, it's a really good option to go with this type of tone. Is this going to be something that I pick up? Probably not. I think this is a pass for me. I just have so many other powders. I have the new meteorites. You guys know I like to use the lightest shade to kind of brighten up under the eyes. So I don't really feel like I need this, but I do think that this is going to be a really good option for anybody who's looking for a brightening under eye powder. Everybody knows that these are good. So I think it makes sense that she added the light pink shade. There are a couple of things that are certain in this life, friends, and Charlotte Tilbury launching new Pillow Talk products is certainly one of them. So what does she have in store for us this season? We have a lot of lip products here and then she also brought back one of my favorite products ever so let's get into it guys we first off have a new kissing lipstick and this is going to be in a new shade called pillow talk fair which i could only assume is a lighter version of the classic pillow talk i think it makes a lot of sense if you want something a little bit lighter or maybe milkier i think this is really gonna work for you you guys know this is a pass for me i'm not a huge fan of the kissing formula it's fine but it's just not my favorite you guys can Check out my lipstick ranking if you want to hear more about why it's not really my favorite. I also don't really think that this color will show up on my lips in that satin formula. So this is going to be a pass. What I think will be a yes, though, is the lip liner in this shade. So she's coming out with another lip cheat in Pillow Talk Fair for $25. And I absolutely love the Charlotte Tilbury lip liners. I try to collect most of them, and I really, really like the nude ones. I always have one of them in my purse. So I I would be interested in giving this one a try. She also has three new shades of the Collagen Lip Bath. I believe this is just kind of like a plumping lip gloss or maybe like a moisturizing lip gloss. And this is gonna be in Pillow Talk Fair, Pillow Talk Medium, and Pillow Talk Intense. So now we have the full range, okay? All of these like kind of boring launches, but I get why she's coming out with these. These things sell really well for Charlotte Tilbury, so it makes total sense. We also have right here what I think is a new product and you guys gotta tell me what you think of this, okay? Because I feel like the name and the packaging are like questionable, okay? Are you ready? Are you ready? These are the Charlotte Tilbury Big Lip Plumpgasm. Plumpgasm, okay? Can you imagine going into Sephora and being like, um, yes, w where can I find the plumpgasm? Yes, yes, the, the big lip plumpgasm. I hope that I don't get demonetized for saying this, guys. I feel like the name is so absurd, but that's okay. I love a good laugh. The packaging, however, I don't know if I can get along with this packaging. This looks like, I hate to say it, but it looks kind of like makeup revolution to me. I hate the quilting. It just looks a little bit cheap and tacky. I've never 
felt it in my hands. By the way, all of these products are now available. They just launched on her site. I'm looking out to see when they come to Sephora. Make sure you are following me on Instagram because I'll let you guys know. I haven't felt this in my hands in person, but it just looks a little bit cheap to me. And can we talk about the lips? Okay, the, the lips and the lipstick protruding from the lip. Like, what is going on there? Do we need that? It's like Pat McGrath, but like PG-13, maybe rated R. Okay, guys, like what is the lipstick doing there? Why is it not putting the color on the lips? Why is it? I just, I don't know. Okay, why is it like that? I don't know. Do you like this? Do you hate it? I hate it. It's a pass for me. Okay, let's move on to a product that I'm actually excited about because Charlotte Tilbury has brought back one of my favorite products that was limited edition. She is re-releasing the Pillow Talk Multi Glow Highlighters. Yes, I loved these. I was so sad that they were limited edition. I feel like they shouldn't be. I feel like they should be permanent. It doesn't say here if these are going to be limited edition once again, but I assure you guys, I see these selling out, okay? So pay attention because these are really, really beautiful. If you're not familiar with these, they are highlighters, but in each compact, you have four different shades. So you get a really nice five in one. Guys, know I love a good multi-purpose product and you can also apply these to the eyes. They are a more pigmented highlighter. Okay, I'll just say that like they're super, super glowy. I already have a review of these because they came out like what was it a year or two ago. So I reviewed them back then. I can link it down below. Same product, same swatches. It just looks like the packaging is a little bit different. And by the way, I forgot to mention these come in two different shades. We have Romance Light, the pinkier one, and then Dream Light, the peachier one. I tend to use Dream Light a little bit more but I know that Romance Light, I mean, surprise, surprise, that one was the most popular, if that sways you in any direction. I think that these are so beautiful. I'm so excited that they're back. Pay attention, guys. They're really good. We cannot do this episode today, friends, without talking about one of the new releases that I am the most excited about. These are from RMS. You guys know I'm already obsessed with their Redimension Hydro Powder blushes, which I mentioned earlier in this video. Well, friends, RMS is launching Redimension Hydro Powder bronzers. I knew that this was coming. My prayers have been answered. I'm so excited for these. They are coming out in four shades. We have shade 01, which is called Beach Walk Betty. Looks like it's going to be really beautiful kind of a pinky undertone for fair skin tones. We also have Malibu Muse, which is going to be for light to medium skin tones. That looks like it's going to be more like golden and warm. We also have tan lines. This is going to be for medium skin tones. And finally, we have Bikini Beach for medium to deep skin tones. I would expect these to have the same kind of smooth, glowy texture that we get from the blushes. And it seems like a lot of you guys, based off of the comments here on Instagram, are also really, really excited for these. These are launching April 9th, and these obviously are a huge yes. In fact, RMS already confirmed they are gonna be sending these to me. I hope that they send me all four shades so that I can demo and swatch them for you guys. But for sure, they're probably gonna be sending me at least one so I can be testing out the four Formula. I'm so excited for these. Comment down below and let me know what you think. I feel like at this point, I'm going to have to do an updated bronzer ranking because we have yet another bronzer release to talk about today. This is from Armani Beauty, and this is the Luminous Silk Sunlit Creamy Bronzing Powder. Take a look at these. They are launching in four shades, and this is described as an ultra creamy bronzing powder. It says that it has smooth powder technology designed with skin gliding oils for an incomparable Silky feel blends seamlessly into the skin to deliver ultra thin and even coverage in four shimmery shades. That sounds very tempting, guys. I think that this is a maybe from me, and I'll tell you why. Number one, I really didn't like the blushes. This seems like it's going to be different. It seems like the formula is described in a different way, but they already kind of like, I don't know. I'm questioning it because I didn't like the blush formula, so maybe they can make a comeback. I'm not really sure, but the other reason that this is a maybe is because there's four shades, and the lightest shade looks very golden. I'll show you guys another sneak peek here from Chic Pro profile. She posted this the other day. And my first thought was that it just looked very, very yellow. I like the fact that these are glowy, but I have a feeling that the RMS in the lightest shade is probably going to work best for me and a lot of us out there who have a fairer skin tone, unless you are very, very golden in undertone. So I'm not sure, guys. You guys need to comment down below. Let me know if you want me to test this out. I hope that this comes in store so maybe I can like swatch it and check it out. It looks beautiful. 
I'm very intrigued by the formula. I'm just kind of questioning the color selection with this one. And finally, friends, before we get into the industry news, I never got a chance to talk about the new Lisa Eldridge skin tint. This is a total yes for me. In fact, this is what I'm wearing on my skin today. I am going to be testing this out at least for a couple of days, preferably a week before I give you guys kind of like a little mini review on it. I think that this is a brilliant idea from Lisa Eldridge. I mean, I like her foundation. Not everybody did, but I feel like, I don't know, when I think of Lisa Eldridge, I think of like fresh, light, radiant complexion. So a skin tint makes total sense. And she always really kills it with the shade range. I got the shade T3, I believe. I'll have it listed in the description box so you don't have to remember that. But I'm really excited about this, guys. I'm testing it today for the first time, so I'm not going to share any thoughts right now. But this was a yes, and this is now available. She also launched some new lip liners, and I'm also testing these out. I got three of the shades. The shade that I'm wearing along with my YSL Love Shine lipstick today is 2C, which is one of the cooler undertone ones. I think I got 1C, 2C, and 2 and if I'm not mistaken. And these are going to be a different formula than her other lip liners. They're not gonna be as long wearing. They're not gonna be like as waxy. They're a little bit more kind of soft and blendable because they're supposed to be for kind of like contouring the lips, almost even if you like weren't going to wear any lipstick with them, or maybe you were gonna just put a little bit of gloss on top like I did with the YSL product. It's very sheer. If you want something that just looks super duper natural, this is kind of what you're gonna to wanna to go for in terms Terms of her line. I think it's a really good idea. I will say, I think it was the 1C, probably the first lip liner I've been able to find that was actually like the same tone as my lips, like the perfect rosy shade. You guys know my lips are like more of a rosy tone and I was very impressed so far, but I will let you guys know my thoughts in a review very, very soon. Moving on for new makeup releases, friends, we are getting into some top news. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be discussing today celebrity makeup brands, two in particular that I'm going to sort of compare and contrast because some of these brands are absolutely killing it and some of them are crashing and burning. Starting off with one of the biggest stories of the week, Selena Gomez is exploring a potential sale of Rare Beauty. What does this mean for the brand? Why is she trying to sell it? Who is going to buy it? Let's discuss this story, guys. If you have been living under a rock, okay, Selena Gomez and her brand are absolutely killing it, okay? She has millions of followers on social media and her brand, just to give you an idea, has generated $400 million, $400 million in sales in the past year. In fact, she has generated more than any other celebrity beauty brand, only second to Fenty Beauty. So Rihanna's ahead of her, okay? We all know that she's killing it too, but Selena Gomez, she is doing pretty well and she has hired some bankers to explore a potential sale. She's either gonna sell the company or potentially IP Maybe she'll get a little bit of like private equity investment. We don't know. Okay, nothing is for certain, guys. This deal probably won't go through until 2025. Let's, you know, let's be honest. But she has hired, you know, the financial guys to look into this for her and see how much she might be able to get for her business. And the number that I'm hearing around town, friends, is that this could be a $2 billion deal which is really big, okay? In comparison, Tom Ford sold to Estee Lauder for 2.8 billion, but that's a little bit more, I don't know if I wanna call it like a heritage brand. That was a much more established brand. Rare Beauty is only like three or four years old and they're looking to sell this baby for $2 billion. So this sale could make Selena Gomez a billionaire. She's not going to get all $2 billion. Obviously, there's other bills to pay and probably other people have to take their cut. But this combined with like her music and all the other stuff that she does, this could make her a billionaire. So I thought we would take a step back and kind of discuss like how has Rare Beauty sort of gotten to this point? How have they gotten to $400 billion in sales? Who's going to buy this brand? And what does this mean for the brand? One of the things that I think has helped Rare Beauty soar in popularity compared to other celebrity makeup brands is just the overall authenticity of the brand. Comment down below and let me know if you agree. But I have this perception that Selena Gomez is very hands-on with this brand. When I think of Rare Beauty, I think of Selena Gomez. I see her personality and her style in the brand overall. I feel like this is something that she has really dreamed up. I feel like she is the soul of the brand. Once again, comment down below and let me know if you agree. And I feel like that authenticity is just so important to today's consumer, especially since we're all kind of like, 
I don't know, skeptical about these celebrity brands? Like, are they a cash grab? Does this person like really care about makeup? Is this really a passion for them? I really see Selena Gomez interested in this as a business. And similarly with Fenty, you know, I think of Rihanna when I think of that brand. And that's the other brand that's doing really well right now when it comes to celebrity beauty. Also, the products are good, okay? They're great quality. I've tried a lot of them, not all of them, but most of them I think are fantastic and you need a good product if you wanna do well. I also think the packaging is really beautiful. I feel like the price point for Sephora is pretty accessible, right? It's not like drugstore, but for Sephora, typically the products are priced a little bit lower than a lot of the other like prestige level brands. I'm not gonna say Rare Beauty is like luxury necessarily, but I would put it in that prestige category. Category. They do a really great job of appealing to a very wide range of ages as well. Like I see Gen Z excited about it. I see, you know, myself, the millennials excited about it, Gen X, etc. you know, more mature customers as well. I feel like everybody can find a product that they love from the Rare Beauty line. I also think that the kind of like social impact aspect of it, you know, she has her fund for mental health, I believe it is. I think a lot of people connect with that as well. Overall, there's nothing really like detracting about the brand and the price is good, the packaging is good, and and the product is good. And of course, obviously, friends, Selena Gomez is very, very famous. She has a huge fan base. She has so many folks following her on social media. Even if you don't follow her on social media, you probably know who she is and you have an opinion of her. And that's going to catch your attention when you see Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez. Do I think that this brand could have been just as successful without Selena Gomez? I think that it could have. I do, especially if it had the resources of maybe being owned by like a Cody or an Estee Lauder or L'Oreal, et cetera. But I don't think it would have grown as fast as it would have without Selena Gomez as the face and the soul of the brand. So those are the reasons why, friends, that I think Rare Beauty has done so, so well in such a short amount of time. And now the question is, who is gonna buy them? Who is gonna buy them for $2 billion? Someone with deep pockets, that's for sure. I was reading some articles and some folks were saying maybe, you know, some private equity firms. Some people were thinking maybe L'Oreal, maybe Unilever. Definitely not Estee Lauder, okay? Cause they don't have the money. That's that's for sure. And some other articles were discussing that perhaps this will block some other smaller brands that are up for sale from selling their companies in 2024 or 2025. There are rumors that Makeup by Mario, Merit, and Kosas are all looking for buyers right now. And finally, friends, I wanted to discuss what do you think all of this means for Rare Beauty? What do you think this means for the price of the products, the quality of the products, the soul of the brand, the social impact aspect of the brand? Do you think that those can still remain intact if Selena Gomez were to sell Rare Beauty to a big you know, beauty conglomerate or a PE firm? Comment down below and let me know if you can think of any brands that are still just as good even after this stage of the company. I would love to know. You know, we talk a lot about Tom Ford and how after they sold to Estee Lauder, Water, like the prices went up, the quality went down, the shades are just kind of not as creative as they once were. It really isn't the same brand that it used to be. It's not as worth it as it used to be. You know, Pat McGrath is another one we've discussed on this channel. They received a lot of investments and now they're really pressured to perform, which is why we see like so many neutral and pink palettes. We used to see a lot more creative releases from the brand. So I would love to hear all of your thoughts. Personally, I don't really think Rare Beauty can survive without Selena Gomez. So I think whatever deal goes down, guys, I think that there's gonna have to be some terms in there that Selena remains on the board and that Selena remains very, very active and hands-on in the product development and also especially the promotion of the products because I feel like it just wouldn't really be the same without Selena Gomez. If I were her, I don't know. I might go for IPO. Like if you're doing this well after like three or four years, I might go for a different option. But hey, if she wants to be a billionaire, I totally get that. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of this story. Let me know all of your thoughts. And then on a very different note, we have JLo Beauty. Another top story from this week is that JLo Beauty is exiting Sephora stores. It was a big launch for the brand. And then shortly thereafter, they're not gonna be sold at Sephora. They are not doing well, friends. And this news came shortly after they announced that their CEO was going to be leaving. She's moving over to Supergoop, so they lost their top executive as well. No bueno for JLo Beauty. So I thought we would discuss this as well. Kind of like a compare and contrast with Rare Beauty.
beauty because clearly, you know, celebrity brands, like they're not bad. There's a right way to do it, but not all of them make sense. Some of them are cash grabs and the consumers can clearly tell that they are. So why is JLo Beauty not doing well? Okay, because I feel like this makes sense. When I think of JLo, I think of the JLo glow, right? At least that's what I think of. I think of beautiful skin, beautiful neutral makeup. I think of radiance. I think that a makeup line or at least a body care line would make a lot of sense for her. So why is this brand not performing well? And I think that the biggest reason, unlike Rare Beauty, is the lack of authenticity with this brand. Nobody thinks that JLo is actually using these products, okay? And I wanna take a second to say, I love JLo. I think she's gorgeous. I think she's beautiful. She's one of my beauty icons. I marvel at her eternal youth, but let's be real, okay? She is spending so much money on all of the facials, all of the treatments. She says she's never gotten Botox or fillers. I don't care if she has or she hasn't, guys. I think that she looks absolutely amazing. Does she look amazing because of these creams and serums? No, she does not. She doesn't, guys, okay? She's got the entire team helping her look good. She even has her glutes insured for $27 million. JLo is one of those celebrities that loves to talk about her humble beginnings. You know, she's so real. She's Jenny from the block. But she's also known for being like one of the bougier and more glamorous celebrities in Hollywood. She's known for being a little bit of a diva, okay? And so with all of that and, you know, all of her self-care, you would think that she would have something that is like a self-care line, but something that is more indulgent, more bougie, definitely more luxury. And we saw that reflected in the prices at Sephora but I have to be honest with you guys, I was gifted some of the products. I think it was like the bum cream and just like the body lotion. I wasn't impressed. I would not repurchase them. They became those products that kind of like sat in my bathroom and eventually I had to use them up. The packaging was pretty cheap. The body cream is $60 and it just comes in a really basic plastic tube. The bum cream as well, it just came in like a plastic, like nothing special, okay? And the products inside also didn't really feel any different than what I have today. And I love to try skincare and body products. I get things from all types of brands. And I gotta tell you guys, the JLo Beauty ones were probably the most disappointing skincare slash body products that I tried last year. The quality just wasn't there. I was like, this is JLo's brand? Like, what is she doing? I really didn't see JLo at the heart of this brand. Like, like I do with Rare Beauty. Couple more thoughts here, friends. Okay, humor me. I find this so fascinating. These are like little mini business case studies for me to analyze. And I love reading all of your thoughts every single episode. You guys are so insightful and smart. One of the other reasons why I don't think JLo Beauty is really doing all that well is because I don't really feel like the target customer and the distribution strategy, like the math isn't mathing, okay? Let me know if you agree. They decided to sell in Sephora and I understand it's a really big retailer and many of us shop at Sephora, okay? But let's be real guys, okay? Sephora is going after a younger customer. They are primarily targeting Gen Z, maybe Gen Alpha as well, I don't know, but primarily Gen Z. And I think it begs the question, Question. Does Gen Z care about JLo? Like, do they even know who she is? I think that Gen Z really only cares about what is trending on TikTok, what is getting all of the buzz. And you definitely see, you know, that kind of reflected in the displays at Sephora as well recently. Everything's about what is trending, what's the hot new thing. And I feel like maybe JLo Beauty would have performed a little bit better, obviously, if they had improved the product and the packaging. We already talked about that. But if they had gone into more of like a luxury setting, more of like a department store, even like a normal Nordstrom, for example, I don't know if Sephora, especially with all of the other brands that are there at a lower price point with better packaging, I don't know if that was really the right decision. And the last thing that I want to say is why the heck didn't JLo Beauty just focus specifically on glowy body products, really niche down, really do well in a single category. I'm talking like shimmery dry oils, body splashes, even like sunless tanner. They should be competing with Sol de Canero who actually is the number one skincare brand at Sephora this past year. I'm not gonna lie, guys, it's Sol de Janeiro. People love the intoxicating scent of all of their creams and their body splashes. Those products are so hot right now. JLo Beauty should be competing with them. They should be making delicious, glowy products just like them. Even Fenty is doing that. They could compete with like Isle of Paradise, for example. I feel like there was an opportunity to make products that were relevant and maybe that JLo would use, but they just 
just didn't do that, guys. They launched moisturizer. They launched like serum with niacinamide because nobody's doing that right now. So yeah, those are my thoughts. And that is all the news that I have for you today, friends. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know which of these new releases you are the most excited for and which ones you think are a complete pass. What do you think of Rare Beauty? What do you think of JLo Beauty? What would you do if you were running these brands? I would love to know. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.